sufficient intelligence has already flowered in you. It doesn't matter what kind of a fool you are, sufficient intelligence has already flowered within you. If I ask you, do you want to be miserable or blissful, there is no second thought as to what is your choice. That much intelligence has flowered, that means you're good enough. That means sufficient evolution has happened. If you did not even know that, then yes, we need to work on your tail, not on your head. So people chose different ways to exercise this choice. The different means that were used are just this. We have been continuously saying this, these are the only choices that you have. You can do it either out of your action. When your action is no more about you, simply doing something, one can know bliss in that or one can know this out of devotion. When your life itself is no more about you, you're completely absorbed into someone or something, then you can know this. Or your intellect has become absolute choice, your mind has become absolute choice. It takes instructions from you every moment of your life. You have disciplined your, your, your mind in such a way, it will not generate one thought that you don't want. Then you can become blissful. Or you transformed your very energies. You got your energy into the right kind of intensity where the amrita in the system, the ambrosia of life which is stored in certain parts of your body opened up and your very body, your very energy, your every cell in your body became sweet. That's all you have, karma, kriya, jnana, bhakti. These are the only four ways. Do it some way, whichever way. It's best that we employ all the four of them, just in case if your love fails, let your kriya work. If your kriya fails, let your karma work. If your karma fails, let your gnana work. Let something happen. Do not use your intelligence in mediocre ways. It once happened. A few young boys caught a butterfly, a centipede, a beetle and a grasshopper. They took the wings of the butterfly and put it on the centipede, cut his legs off and put the grasshopper's legs and cut the beetle's head and put it in the front and created a strange creature and took it to a naturalist who was in the neighborhood with very innocent faces, just like you do. <laughs> Some of you do this when you come and sit in front of me with very innocent faces. They went and presented this to the naturalist and said, we found this strange in insect, please tell us what this is. The naturalist examined it very carefully and said, oh, you just got a humbug. <laughs> the
This is the whole problem. This is the whole problem that your mind and your intellect is busy creating a humbug. With humbug you don't get anywhere, okay? If you crawl like a centipede, you may get somewhere. If you hop like a grasshopper, you may hop around, not going very far, but still you may get somewhere. But if you become a humbug, you don't get anywhere. That's the first and foremost thing that you have to get rid of. Why there has been a such a significant stress on love, it's just because of this, because you can get rid of the humbug, that strange creature within you which doesn't fit into any definition, <laughs> which keeps changing, which keeps changing every day. It changes its tack and its tricks on a daily basis. This humbug won't get anywhere because this is not the work for a naturalist. This is not natural, you know. The humbug that you create within yourself is not natural. It is your nature that you can choose. And if you choose, choice means conscious. If you consciously choose, bliss will be your natural way of being. It is not something that's hanging up in the sky. If you choose, your choice will definitely be blissfulness. That will be your natural way. But this humbug, this creature that you have created, this humbug, you have to deal with it. So what should I do with it? There is nothing to do with the damn thing because it's made up by you. There is nothing to do, it just needs to be discarded. What is there to deal with it? There is nothing to deal with it. You need to understand this. In the East, if you look back in the history of this Eastern cultures all over Asia, steeped in spiritual processes, Thousands of years ago, when the rest of the world was still behaving like wild animals, they were in heights, peaks of intellect. Even at that time, though they developed music, mathematics, astronomy, cos cosmology, never ever there has been a subject called psychology because whatever kind of humbug you brought in front of an enlightened being, he just discarded it, he never paid attention to it. No, no, my humbug is different. What does it matter? <laughs> it's your making. <laughs> there is nothing to examine, it's your making. Whether you add grass grasshopper's legs, or you put elephant's legs to it. What is the… what is there to examine? It's a distortion of life. So they never ever developed anything called a psychology or psychiatry because they were not interested in examining your humbug. There is no need to waste time trying to know the humbug because it is just a false creation. You set your emotions right, bring some love into your heart. Love is not a relationship. The relationships that people are building are mostly an escape from themselves. If you're alone, most people on this planet cannot be even alone for a day by themselves, most people. 
because they have become such humbugs, they cannot be with themselves for an hour, probably they'll go crazy. See, when you're alone, if you suffer loneliness, that means you're in bad company, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it so? When you're in bad company, naturally you seek some other company which you think is good company. So most relationships are being formed in the world because people are in bad company when they are with themselves. They want to escape this humbug. To escape this humbug, they are forming a relationship. And they underestimated the other humbug. Generally, most people underestimate the other humbug. This is not happening because you made this being so blissful. Now, you want to share this. If this being has become blissful, relationships will not happen as an escape, as a relief from yourself. A relationship is not a relief from your own humbug. A relationship is an opportunity to share your blissfulness, that is if you've gotten there. Otherwise, it is better you're put in a solitary cell. If you don't know how to be silent, at least suffer the solitary. Because at least you will not humbug the rest of the world. Isn't it a safety measure the world should take? Isn't it the norm in every society if somebody has an infectious disease, he is quarantined? Is that not a normal thing in any civilized society? No? Isn't it so? Because what is not good for you is definitely not good for anybody. If you are suffering the nonsense of who you are, if you are suffering the humbug that you have created within yourself, at least don't give the bug to others. So that's what love means, that you don't give your humbug to others, you give your sweetness to others. That is why so much insistence on love that when you meet somebody, whatever humbug you are, the sweetest part of you, only that should touch the other person, the best part of you. You are a humbug, you deal with it because it's your creation. You have no business to present your humbug to anybody else on this planet. That's what love means. Love by itself doesn't mean anything. But it is a wonderful, wonderful step, stepping stone to become blissful. So if you cannot manage your intellect the way you want it, this you can do. For this you just need a little discipline, that there are certain things that you don't do no matter what. You have to establish this.